Hey, this is Jeff, AKA Quiet Horn from quiethorn.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of little mouthpiece whistle techniques. So the first one is pretty easy. You might be familiar with this one already. Uh, you take the mouthpiece, uh, you put the, the cup side against your, the palm of your hand, put it upside down and you, uh, you just blow really hard across the, the opening uh, here on the shank side. So it's just like you're blowing across an empty bottle of some kind, same principle, you just blow across the top and angle your airstream down slightly into it. It tends to work better with uh, small shank mouthpieces rather than large shank mouthpieces and I'm not sure why, maybe just the larger shank requires more air or something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's not the main technique I want to talk about because um, the other one I think is more interesting. So for these, this other technique, um, the one I just I kind of demonstrated there at the beginning, uh, what you do is you take your mouthpiece, you're gonna cover the, the shank opening with a finger. I'll use just a pointer finger on my right hand and you cover it completely so it's all sealed. Um, then you take the mouthpiece and you put it at kind of a 45 degree angle uh, anchored in the corner of your mouth and you, you only cover really, I guess if this is like backwards, if this is the, call this the outside of the mouthpiece. You only really cover about half of the mouthpiece uh, up against your, uh, your skin there to begin with. And then with, in that position, you just, the, the, way I, the way I figure out how to do this is you just, you literally whistle. So just like a regular whistle. Right, and when you whistle like that, you're gonna notice if you pivot the, uh, the mouthpiece in, inwards, in towards your, uh, the center of your, your lips here, you're gonna start to get these strange tones. And eventually, once you find the sweet spot, you'll, you'll center on a really nice strong uh, pitch coming out of, out, of the, out of the cup of the mouthpiece. So the next thing you might be wondering is, can you do this with a mouthpiece on the horn? And the answer is yes, you can. So um, what I found is in order to get this to really work, um, well, first of all, it doesn't really work in the way you might expect it would. Uh, you would hope or you would think maybe that once you get that tone on the mouthpiece in this configuration, that by moving the slide on your horn, uh, you'd be able to alter the pitch because you're changing the, uh, the amount of air in this, this resonant cavity is as you're making the sound of, on the mouthpiece. Uh, I found that just, that just doesn't happen. But um, the easiest way to get this to work, uh, and we'll try some other setups, but um, where are my mutes? Um, the easiest way to get it to work is you need to somehow stop the air coming out of your bell, which also means that this, this sound is going to be coming solely from the mouthpiece area, so it doesn't project from your bell at all. So that's not really that great, and not useful, maybe. But um, you can either stop the air uh, coming out of your bell with a plunger if you just hold it in there tight enough. That is, creates an okay seal. You can also stop it with a Harman mute, uh, with the stem in, and then just covering the opening completely with your hand. But again, that's not as good a seal. So I found the best way to stop the sound from coming out of your bell is just to stuff a towel up there. <laughs> um, that also has the benefit of freeing up your left hand so you don't have to hold the horn, the horn weird. But even with this, this configuration, it doesn't, it's not gonna, it doesn't produce as nice a sound as it does just with the mouthpiece off the horn. So I'll show you what I mean. You can get these weird, uh, ambiguous kind of whistle sounds, kind of like this. It sounds like maybe I'm getting some kind of harmonics there. I'm not really sure. Uh, the problem with this is that the more you try it, the more lightheaded you get. Like I'm really lightheaded right now. Um, 
I think I just need to practice it more to get a better control of, of how to manage my air. But yeah, uh, so uh, you probably couldn't see it, but I was moving the slide a couple times as I was as I was trying to play the pitch, and it just doesn't really have any effect. Like even if you try to lower the pitch as you move your slide, try to lower the pitch by opening your jaw more or something and changing it up up, up there, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, so if you try to play it without anything obstructing your bell, it just works even worse. Not really at all. So anyway, the answer is yes, it works with the mouthpiece on the horn, but Either it just doesn't work well enough to do anything with, or uh, I just haven't spent enough time trying to develop it. But in any case, uh, it definitely produces some of those fun bird-like whistling sounds with the mouthpiece off the horn. Right, and that's worth something. It's kind of neat. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's the trombone whistle bird-like mouthpiece thing. Um, cool, thank you for watching. Have a good day.